That's just what it is. His plain old butchery. That guy's great. No, no, listen. He's only a man. You can beat him because you're a tank, kid. You're a greasy, fast, 200-pound Italian tank. Go through him. Run over him. Okay. Get in the car. We'll get him. Okay. The champion comes back out. He's leading across again, starting with the left and left and left. Left to the chin, left to the head, left to the chin, left to the head. Coming around now. Just holding that right hand. He's got a cock. He's just waiting for that precise moment that he wants to... Man, you're too slow. Get your cameras ready. Watch this now. Watch this. He's going down. Here it comes. <laughs> been awesome to watch. You can be critical of GWS, but they just haven't been able to breathe, Bucks. No. What have really came today with the pressure? Um, it was, yeah, th they dominated the, the ground ball game. That's, that's what happened. Well, I barely watched, I barely watched any of that last, on the weekend. However, what I am going to say to start this podcast off is Salamat Malam. And that's from me, Needles, on behalf of my very good friends, Ragnar the Viking Lothbrok and Sparrow the giant flapping soaring Sparrow, uh, who they're both with me. Gentlemen, welcome to Never Surrenders by the Squinners. This is the only GWS Giants fan-made podcast and is therefore the best, as we all know, is the only one to do music and probably the best music playing fan podcast fact um, across the world. How are you? Actually, no, I'm gonna, before you, Needles, you, no, not Needles, Sparrow, you're just about to get a say something. We're going to flick to, uh, on the top of my screen, Ragnar, who's lying sideways on his bed <laughs> with a bunch of grapes, I think, Roman Emperor style, <laughs> just about to dangle it into his mouth. He's chilling. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just just chilling out, mate. We had a big day at work, so big big day um, on the golf course, and uh, and ready ready to rock and roll for this pod, mate. Ready to roll, Sparrow. How are you? Sal salamat malam. Yes, yeah, so salamat ma salamat ma malam to our Malaysian listeners, which yeah, surprisingly is surprisingly is our <laughs> third biggest audience on Spotify. <laughs> Now, listeners, we we're in the process of um, what the hell we're in the process of moving platforms, and I'm finding out all sorts of little Easter eggs. And one of those Easter eggs is, of course, our Malaysian listeners, which surprisingly beats Canada. It beats New Zealand, where we do have a lot of listeners. Uh, US is obviously up there, and obviously Australia. But Salamat Malang. Our Malaysian listeners, it's an absolute pleasure to have you on board the Orange we love Crush you guys. journey. And, this goes uh, out to you. We really, really appreciate it. From Kuala Lumpur to Georgetown in Penang. You've done some time episode, there. You've done some time Malaysia. there. Maybe, maybe you spread yeah. the, the orange seed when you're over there. That must have been. I was just wearing my jerseys and people kept coming <laughs> up to me. And I didn't get it at the time. I thought they, they were just attracted to orange. Like, I'm attracted to Orange. And I was like, oh, are you a Giants fan? I said, yeah, a podcast. And maybe it just, you know, it just carries on. That's yeah. how Infiltrated. the title wave begins. Uh, but back to, let's, let's start. Let's, we're not going to talk about the game for very long. <laughs> Finals is no longer in our hands. It's We have to win both our hard games and hope other results fall for us. Let's talk about issues of the week. Uh, you, someone's written at the top, Proust, first game back, which just goes to show, <laughs> just goes to show how chirpy about this fucking thing we all are. Yeah, I, who wants to talk about? Well, there's no much. First game back. Did you see any of the game, um, Rags? 
uh, the VFL. Um, mm. I did not. I did not. But I heard he had like 20 touches or something, didn't he? Mind, he's a good player. He's a good player. And, of course, we're down on him because he's never actually done anything right. for, the, for the ones. But, I mean, it must be bloody tough doing rehab for months on months on months on months. And, you know, everyone says, where's bloody sauerkraut? And they, you're the butt of the jokes. And finally, you get a game. So, good on you, Prusy. Hopefully, so, so we if see you in the had- ones. So if he had twenty touches in in the twentieth round, he's averaging one touch a round. That's why you're on him, mate. Your maths. <laughs> you debuted with your maths last week and you've come in strong again. <laughs> Rags Ragnar's maths. Unbelievable. <laughs> no more bakes, just maths. Rag, just equations. Just yeah. equations. And What's my favorite algebra today? <laughs> uh, so one one disposable around, okay. Did you, do you have a view? Was he so you, you think he's quite a good player and he did well to be back? No, he's, he's good. playing for us next year. He he's he has shown he's got ability, he just doesn't have durability. So I would be more than happy to uh let the other guys have his position, i.e. Bradsey and onions and our up and coming uh mayonnaise. While I do like Bredzy um, as a nickname, it obviously goes in with the whole sandwich theme. Mm. Is it possible that we could suborn or appropriate the name? He was called Mummy's Boy the week before last on the pod. I think that's a really good. He's a Mummy's Boy. He's the Mummy's Boy. Like it's it's very good and it's boy. very clever and it works in many ways. It's a pun. Mm. No, it's... Let's just, we don't have to make a decision now. No, no. Let's just not be hasty. No, no. Well, you know we've got the um the name page on the website, and blokes have more than one name, so he can have two. Oh, yeah, Mummy, okay. Mummy's boy and Bredzy. I mean, one. Like one I'd say, like to. You know, we've got the name page on the website. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, um, you wrote that. It's a website with the name page. Yep, yep, indeed. Um, and, and also, onions need some work. As, as Ragnar called it, uh, a guy made a debut. Mm. Yeah. Who's that guy and how'd he go? And what do Another we know? Another Toby. Another Toby. Mate, can't, not a, never enough Tobys. No, Toby McMullen. Um, small forward, uh, pretty explosive, um, bit zippy, looked a little bit lost um, in game, but obviously first game in into a new system. Yeah, I mean, it's a bit of work to do, but, but yeah, I, th- I think he didn't look too out of place. He did one good pressure act in the first quarter, which I thought was impressive. And then when I checked his his super co- super coach stats, when I was about to leave the game at three quarter time, he was on about three points. So mustn't have yeah. much else. <laughs> but, it's, <laughs> but he it's um, a little bit Cadman like for my liking. He he did come <laughs> in with uh, hey Cadman's back. We'll get to him. Um, he did come in with basically the role to play, which was the. Yeah, pressure, small forward, bringing that. Um, and I do like his wispy little mo, and he's got sort of a pseudo mullet, which is it's eighties esque. Yeah, it's not, it's, it's not a full blown. That? It's not a full blown um, macca from the you know macca from um, from the out from the <laughs> academy that we've got pinning hopes on. That is one of the best, and I really hope we sign him up just for the mullet. <laughs> But Toby's is it's not full blown. It's like a it's sort of a half neck length and it's oh, it's got good density too. I'll, I'll... Is it about is it about plug it plugger length back in the day? Yeah. You know how yeah. plugger used to have that halfway yeah. down his neck. It's respectable. It's not it's yeah. not too hideous, it's just respectable. Like a a lot of effort's gone into it, but not much effort at the same time. <laughs> Let it grow within reason. Let yeah, yeah, yeah. So all respect there, Tobes. And yeah, like you said, you can't have enough Tobies in the forward line. But geez, we missed that. We fucking missed those boys, Stormzy and uh, and Bet and Snooze. We'll get to that, of course, in our match analysis we will get to that in the second quarter. We'll leave ourselves a couple of minutes in the second quarter to work to work ways through it, and mainly we'll just mostly talk about the Matildas. Um, uh, but what what did happen also last week is, as far as I can tell, 
And obviously, I'm not the guy with all my fingers on all the dials of all the interwebs, but we set it on fire. Is that what we did? Did we burn it up, the interweb? Oh. Did, you, did Ragnar's virtuosity combine with your uh, – quite extraordinary. Because let me tell you, mate, I never saw that coming. <laughs> from back when, back when I first knew you to what you can do now, uh, the, <laughs> the video that you put together for, yeah. for Toby Green, he's our skipper, it's yeah. gone bananas, hasn't it? It's, it's not quite viral, but certainly common cold. It's it's common cold. It's got it's got viral. Uh, what's the attributes? what do you think? Viral attributes. traces, isn't that what used to be always in the in the sewage? You have to be worried about viral particles or viral yeah, traces. COVID. That they were testing for it's it. Definitely got traces. Traces of something. So it's it's contagious. It's contagious. <laughs> no, it, it, it got some good uptake. Um, people loved it. Actually, I was going to feed in some some very nice uh, comments. So I'll just I'll mention some of the some of the awesome comments we had. Absolutely love yeah, this. Let's, is from, let's let's have a little moment to pat ourselves on the back. This is from Nick Mac. <laughs> Nick Mac, uh, absolutely love it. TFG first player I knew the name of. Lots of love hearts. Um, gotta love Toby from Brendan Howden. Uh, Jenny Everett, this is great. Don't you ever change, Toby Green. You're a larrikin and a character of the game, the heart and soul of the Giants. Well said. That's a fantastic tribute to your to your to your leader from Elizabeth Hayes. Maybe our leader. And Pip Lewis, why did why did you make that? You made me cry. Yeah, no, it was emotional. Wow. There's there's plenty more too, but yeah, no, that was that was some good ones. And it was a tear again. It was uh, beautiful to put together. Some absolute gold in that. GWS YouTube channel. Yeah, the bit where he's walking off and he knows he's got the camera on him and he's knack and he goes, oh, fuck. Like, <laughs> <it's> just, <laughs> well, I mean, fair enough. Yeah, no, I mean, well, it was extraordinary and it looks really good and it looks great on the internet. I've shown many people and I can find it quite easily by typing. I mind you, all the platforms. Actually, you know how all the platforms. We're, we're putting it on television and I was showing. Hey, it's even on threads. I was showing Dr. Nang's about it and we were typing it he was typing it into his television like television youtube so you've got to get every mm. every letter <laughs> and we went we got we got to never and it didn't come up and then space surrender didn't come up didn't come up space <laughs> by space the oh, you're not looking for the channel space, are you? <laughs> we went into s q u mate i your channel t t <laughs> Predicted, squinted, yes, get it. <laughs> and then it got the wrong one because there's two no, channels. Well, then we had a choice of two. <laughs> Mate, your your channel that you set up has about five views and one subscriber. <laughs> and I think the subscriber's me. <laughs> <laughs> I ran out of I ran out of hope. I have to say, I got too excited. That was it doesn't, it doesn't feel really, like that at all. It's, let's let's really push it out there. And um, yeah, five weeks in. Ah. Uh, too exciting yeah. yeah put that put that on the list <laughs> so if you go looking for us on youtube and you haven't seen two channels subscribe to both one may not exist yeah. <laughs> in a couple of weeks <laughs> uh, the one the one that has the face of the guy from uh, <laughs> one of our many logos one of our yeah, many logo the, iterations the, purple, the bad purple giant from <laughs> mcu universe universe the Avengers Endgame or whatever that guy. Did that's you make the that? One. That's did the you, one we need to get yeah. rid. Did you make that on paintbrush on the old? I didn't um, make that. PCs. That was mad. That was mad. Tickle Yama, our erstwhile uh, Richmond loving Tasmanian oh. um, pod art guru. Okay, okay. It was some some of his better work. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, if you want to find us, we are on YouTube twice. We're on Threads <laughs> once, which I don't know if Threads is going to be around for much longer, but we're there. Uh, TikTok, yeah, it's Insta, X. Uh, X, and Facebook's pretty new and probably where we'll put a bit of effort. So yeah, start really, following us on Facebook. Facebook's really the up and coming platform. <laughs> yeah. What I'm I sorry. love, what I love about this conversation, because we're on Zoom, we only have 40 minutes, we're really avoiding. Uh, the second quarter. I, I respect <laughs> us. Having to hear um Cal Ward on um on Footy Phil. That was interesting. Listen to Footy, uh listen to Cal. He one thing he mentioned was um just his on his two fiftieth. He because he's I think he's up to like two eighty games now or something or getting close. Two ninety. Two ninety. And he said yeah. on his two fiftieth he really didn't expect to be playing much longer. So 
that was interesting to hear from Cal, and um, he's obviously had an awesome season again. So and got the and got the contract extension, which was genuine, not a piss take by um, social media giants. So yeah, <laughs> good, good to see him going around again next year, and he's feeling good and he's playing great footy. So that there, that was a good good chat. He was chatting to uh, Phil and Al Allison and uh, Kenneth. Yeah, Kenneth was on there. So that was a good chat. But yeah, I um I believe you've got something up your sleeve for us, Rags. Yeah, a little tribute to Cal Ward, written actually by another member of the Never Surrender by the Squinters panel, the chief, our leader probably. He, I'd say you're the captain, aren't you, Needles? Absolutely. Backseat driver, how I like to think about it. <laughs> Backseat driver, yeah. Yeah, beautiful the talented lyrics. guys up the front do all the work, and I just offer advice that's ignored from the back. And that's fine by me. <laughs> Couldn't put it better myself, actually. That's how I put it. But Ragnar sang it better. So that, that'll be that. That's going to be the song that'll go on his farewell, and I'm looking forward to it. Uh, but what was another thing that happened? Oh yeah, a guy kicked eight goals in the VFL. Who a guy. The song about, and I'm really, really proud of, and gave the words, and gave <laughs> you the, and both of you don't have the internet, and you don't even know what fucking Hamilton is, or any idea what musical theatre is, and it's a masterpiece. It's got Jason <laughs> Dilby and Aaron Cadman. And it's all over the zeitgeist. Mm. And it's going to be a duet and it's a masterpiece. I could see them playing it in their house over dinner, having a laugh, maybe a bit of Hamilton on the background. Are you talking about this because you're avoiding Cabman kicking eight goals in the VFL? Oh, yeah, he kicked eight goals. Bagged full year. They're mostly mostly from 30 out or whatever. He did quite well. This was the game I was looking for. This is the game that tips him over, gives him the confidence. And uh, we're going to see a new Cadman for the last, what, two games? Two games. No, hopefully, four games. Hopefully, we'll play two, two finals. Hopefully he gets a run. 
he, the clips looked good. He was all over the place. He was roving. He was leading out. He was kicking straight as. It was very um it was very Jerry Jeremy Cameron like. Like he a lot of them weren't big pack marks. A lot of them were crumbed goals or balls on the ground, left foot snaps. Um mm-hmm. yeah. Uh it's hopefully it gives him a bit of confidence going into the end of the year. He bulks up and puts on fifteen kilos in the off season and tears tears it apart. But mm. I think that's um that's what the Giants were looking for and yeah. Yeah, fuck. Let's hope, hope he brings it. It was pretty extraordinary what Jezza did in his first year. Like he came out and just went bang. Like from 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 day dot, first year he just he was extraordinary. And to get compared to that's pretty tough. But yeah, hopefully that's the game that Cads needed to um, spark the confidence and get him going in the ones. Um, It'll take time. It'll take time. But you know, yeah. he, he's got it. He oh, you watch clips of him as a as an eighteen, and he's got it. Right, yeah, he's got definitely. presence and he's got speed, and it, he's finding it difficult as pretty much every forward, apart from maybe Jeremy Cameron, mm. did or does, and that's no surprise. But that once he starts realizing he's way too good for twos, and then he'll get to ones, and it'll take a little bit of time to realize he's more than good enough for ones, and then he'll get 10 more kilos and see you later. Job's mm-hmm. done just in time for him to, you know, get to. Free agency or whatever it is. If you if you look at the clip, if you look at the clips of Cads in that in the highlights, you will see the mulleted McCormack floating around. He had a run with him as oh, well. Yeah, he, he, there. he did, mate. You'll see the mullet, the flowing locks. So yeah, worth watching. Did he, did he snag any? Um, didn't. I haven't seen the report yet. I was just watching Cadman's highlights. This is <laughs> the best thing that Ragnar the Viking Lothbrok has ever read. Uh, and it's not, it's from New Zealand, one of our big listening groups, obviously not as big as Malaysia, but still right up there. Uh, and it's not from my cousin Kev. Shout out to Kev. How are you going, babe? It is from Amelia in New Zealand. And I'm going to do it in my New Zealand accent for, for the lols. Um, I can't really. Although, did you see, you might have heard, apparently there was a rugby, there was a rugby thing and a bloke was there. Uh, and Australia was there and he was walking past and someone had written Australia sucks on the side of a wall and underneath someone else had written New Zealand zero. <laughs> I wish I'd thought of that. I hope it's true. Anyway, um, Kia Ora. I'm from New Zealand, New Zealand, and have been a GW, GWS, how would they say it, fan since I started watching AFL in 2013. What, why wonder, what I wonder was the catalyst for that. It's lonely watching AFL in Unzad and have and had an even lonelier supporting GWS. I had never met another fan in my life until I went to my first GWS game at Mardi Gras Oval. That would have been against the Suns. Beautiful day. You probably crossed paths. Ago. Probably did. So I just went, she must have, I was speaking in New Zealand accent the whole day that day. So she, that's probably why she's. Uh, so I just wanted to say that I appreciate your podcast so much. And as I get to vicariously share my love and enthusiasm for the Giants and talk shit about footy, hashtag never surrender. I mean, Beautiful. You want Beautiful, me, Amelia. Amelia, if you want an award for writing the best feedback, the, like the best, yeah, 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 that'll just take it. You just drink it, all the free wine you can possibly have, suck it right down. Uh, and we'll share it with you because that's lovely. So it wasn't that wasn't just one of you guys making making shit up, uh, no. Amelia from New Zealand. Like <laughs> this is genuine. actually this is actually a genuine person. This is a genuine person. This is a genuine person, and um, well, we she's even got. got... Vote. I I think I think we should, we need to seek her out and get her on the podcast because I too would like to hear her story of how yeah. she got. What's, into what's the her giant origin story? Absolutely, I think yeah, well, that would be so. They're all coming Amelia, out of the woodwork. There's, well, there's Amelia, another Amelia. Amelia, you reach out to us and uh, send us an email, and um, needs might get back to you in a couple of months. But um, we'd love to. <laughs> yeah, in the we, we, we'd love we'd love to get you on the podcast. So um, yeah, Absolutely. Us up. I will not be able to not speak because I have New Zealand cousins, and when I speak to them, you can't help but speak in a New Zealand accent. It's just impossible. <laughs> it's so much fun. But and so I'm going to do that. But even yeah. still, it's genuine offer. No, there's well, if you're going to start offering um, chats and uh, debuts on the pod to everyone that writes to us, you're going to get busy because <laughs> they're all coming out of the woodwork. It's a lot of content, it. though, isn't it? That's a yeah. lot of content. That's free content. 
Well, we had um, we had another Bill, bloke. I started going for New Zealand for the DWS to it. We had we had another bloke from Canada. He has written oh, to shit. us. No, I forgot to tell you, Blake's about this. He wanted to know. How do Canadians speak? What are they supposed to say? E. E. Mm. So he's big on he's big on Twitter, um, e. or X. He said, "Hey, mate, great. To- no, sorry. Hey, guys, I love the podcast." I just wanted to clarify. Your Canadian accent's awesome, Sparrow, by the way. Really <laughs> I just wanted to clarify me. if I'm allowed to compete in the contests. Hey. I'm a Canadian living in Canada. I know it would cost a bit to ship, and is it all good if, and it's all good if I can't compete? Now, I just want to tell Kyle that you can absolutely compete in our contest, mate. We'll get the merch to you. If you come up with the best picture and tag us on your socials, Believe you, believe me, mate. We'll get the prize to you. So, and that goes if out I to all you, our Kyle, episodes. Ian, episodes. I would wait until like late December or January and take one of you in fucking five foot of orange snow or something. Really, like mm. that would be unique. You're not going to get anything more than that. Nah, not many Australians compete with that. In we might time. not have any prizes left by then, unless you do go cooking your nans. What are they, Frosty Bites <laughs> or whatever they were? <laughs> Lamington's. Lamington's ship to Canada might not work either. Maybe some uh, that's the thought that counts, though. Isn't, that's, our, that's our shtick, isn't it? We have a crack. <laughs> and if it ends up in just a piece of soggy coconut and soggy, soggy spongy coconut, then whatever. Like, you and- know. Yeah, and Nathan, your prize is coming, but it's on you because you got to me back <laughs> late in the week when I was out of energy. I'll do. I'll send you your prize this week. Thank you, hey, guys. Guys, one more thing on the first quarter. There was a bit of a where there was a bit of a where were you moment happening uh, on Saturday night. Mm. So where where were you guys when the the Matildas won the penalty shootout? Mm, mate, it was. I was watching the whole thing. What? No, I don't, I don't mind penalty shootouts. I found because you can't do anything about it. It's very binary. It's 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 in or it's out. There's no build up where you can see it coming or what could you have done or like it was a fucking bullshit penalty or something like that. There's no there's none of that growing angst. It's just you kick the goal or you save it, and then you get another goal immediately afterwards. I've found it okay. I was squeezing my brother's knee very tightly, and then one of his children even tighter, and that was fine because that's what they're for. Um, but yeah, watch the whole thing like a boss. Wow. Where where were you? And and out on a couch. Yeah, nice. nice. It was one of those moments. It was been? like it was like Stephen Larkham's drop goal in the um the World Cup in South Africa in ninety nine. And one of those moments you remember for one of those sporting moments you remember forever. Yeah, I was um I was at home on the couch. Hey, Freeman. It was um it was the first bit of World Cup, admittedly, that I had watched. And my missus as well. And she was crying every time the French would miss because she felt sorry for them. Um, I think that's the wrong I think yeah. that's the wrong attitude. Yeah, yeah. Mrs. Sparrow. <laughs> so um but yeah, it was incredible. It was pretty stressful. Um, but yeah, an amazing, I, amazing sport. Dr. Nags, and we Dr. did Nags and I spent a lot of time going to pretend to be French and going, Mid, and all of that sort of thing <laughs> when they missed and really, really kind of yeah. Trolling them, trolling them from Annandale. They felt it. Yeah, and it did lead into well, a bit of a. Yeah. <laughs> it did lead into a bit of a th- uh, fourth quarter plan at all costs issue. Whether we change the pod from never surrender to till it's done by the Squinters, a Matilda's fan podcast. Thoughts. <laughs> I mean, a huge audience. Just really ride the wave. Ride the wave for two weeks and then we <laughs> jump back to the Giants. Well, it's not even two weeks because the semifinals on Wednesday. Oh, it's less than a week, yeah. Well, and, and then I'm presumably the final will be on the weekend. So we could mm. we could do it every night for a week, make a fortune, and then queue in the rack, wander <laughs> off like we do the sunset. Yeah, we might like be Shane, you know? Like a ch- cheap Chinese copy. Just micro. Yeah, well, I don't know a lot about them, so I'm going to have to do a bit of reading, but. I do. Good. I do. Well, you're the host. Because, my, yeah, my brother spent, bless him, a lot of time on the internet after that, filling us in with all the interesting <laughs> bits. So let's yeah. get into this bloody second quarter. Second quarter. Second quarter. Out this 
dog yeah. fight. So that's what, what we've done. We've done this really well. We've got three and a half minutes to get through the game. I didn't see it. I don't. I wouldn't watch it while I watched that. I checked the phone. It was 18 nil, five minutes in. Thanks very mm. much. I said, I'm going to go and walk mum and dad's dog. I decided to fucking run the dog because the dog's <laughs> fat. The dog thought having a run was great for the first 500 metres and got pretty dark on the next 1,500 metres. I know what running with an anchor is like. When I turned around to have a recovery walk, the dog looked at me. I know what that look meant because I've been told it. I've got that look a number of times from Libby when I've looked at her. It took a while. What a ter- That was terrible. And then, But we didn't give up. We kept kicking goals. They just kept kicking more. Yeah, yeah, it was tough. It was tough. I mean, um, I actually want to take a bit of the blame there. I thought I took the power way too lightly. I mean, they were coming off a three or four game losing streak and we're always going to – they've got the talent to 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 rebound with Rosie and Butters and, and the likes. Um, but they were missing Boke. They were missing Dixon. They don't have a Ruckman, as we know, in Lysette at the moment. So I, I was pretty optimistic, but we started poorly. They got – a couple of early goals. I think Toby had a chance to snag one, and it was a shit fight. It was a terrible kick. And then Ricky's got a couple in the in the first half, which was nice to see. But we just he couldn't get. Goals. Yeah, he got some goals. He bounced back from the double bake. I saw him getting thrown out of the way by Lear Lear like a wet towel. No, he's back, mate. He's back with a vengeance. <laughs> that was one positive, but weren't too many other positives we got to our up well they just had they had more pressure than us they were quicker than us they wanted to, wanted the pill more and for some reason we just couldn't couldn't get going quick chat Ray, how are the grapes going mate you've nearly finished them is, have they been <laughs> delicious and you know, the toga is still on <laughs> just waiting for the champagne mate i did watch the game uh now I have been following along on the big footy site and there was a lot of very angry GWS supporters. They were irate. They were fuming, frustrated. Um, yeah. And I take it, I take a little bit of a different view of the game. Um, of Port are Guns a very well drilled, Port are a very well drilled um, team. They've been playing together for a long time. They've got, a very, very, very exciting midfield with Zach Butters, Connor Rosie, Jason Horn Francis, who probably had just probably his best game of his career. He had 27 possessions to kick three goals, one. Mm. Um, and their midfield absolutely smashed us. Like, we we think we've got stars in our midfield. Yeah, we've got Tom Green, Stephen Cornelio, Josh Kelly, Callan Ward, um, some proper Jets. And Toby Green actually played probably, I'd say, 50% of the game in the midfield mm. and they tore us to pieces. So whether that's on the players themselves or the game plan and coaches. Could have been the Matildas is, win. Could is have been debate. That, I would, they party too hard after the Matildas win possibly. Yeah. And I mean, a lot of our, uh, a lot of, <laughs> <laughs> a lot of our possessions across the half back line. They Any were, port in a storm, Sparrow. I think um, I think like Whitfield had twenty seven, Himmelberg had twenty seven, but I thought Himmelberg had actually had a pretty, pretty horrible game. Um, a lot of nothing possessions and and lost a lot of one on one contests. And then you go to our forward line and Riccardi did improve. He did get thrown around early by Alia Alia, but he did bounce back and take a couple of strong marks, which we really called for um, earlier on. Uh, in the season, and Jesse Hogan was just nowhere. Um, I said, pe- uh, I saw people calling him soft, and uh, he just played bruise free footy essentially. Um, Nick Haynes got subbed out, so I'm thinking Nick Haynes is on his last legs at the Giants, and I still think he's going okay. And and um, yeah, just. We're all just just outclassed by a better team, better system, in their home ground, on their home ground, and I mean they kicked seven goals to three in the first quarter, which essentially shut us shut us down. Yeah, it was it was uh, fucking ugly. The yeah, I don't know too many port uh, too many giant supporters would have been watching the, the last quarter. It was, I mean, because it just usually usually we do have that never surrender attitude and play, you know, we fight until the end and all that, but we just fucking couldn't, couldn't claw back. Was there a bit of surrendering? 
Well, I wouldn't call Actually, there it... wasn't, because I was watching the last quarter, because my yeah. stupid eldest son is obsessed by footy now, and all he wants to do is watch footy, even when we're getting stiffed. So we had to sit there and struggle through it. There was no tension. It was just like, oh, we get to go. Okay, good. Uh, yeah, they they get, to. And they, yeah, exactly. I think, I think one reason for that might be because we don't have a lot of injuries at the moment, so there's a lot of competition for spots. Mm. So players can't really take their foot off the pedal because if they do... They're just not going to get a game next week, especially the real fringe players. Um, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Sparrow. Are we underestimating the impact of losing Brent, Stormy Daniels, and Toby Bedford Snooze? I mean, lo- we, oh. lost, we lost those to and Finn Callahan, uh, who's, who's worked through the midfield, has been awesome this year. Makes great decisions, great ball user, elite kicker, and the pressure from Snooze and Stormy, you know, losing that, I think, I think that's such a huge part of our game. And Toby McMillan in his first game to ask him to deliver it. I mean, we we don't have X at the moment as well. Um, um the muffin, the muffin man, mm. McMullen. Yeah, What's his I name? think well, muffin man. You, you know Mick where us that's not bad. Mick Muffin, Muffin, Sausage McMuffin. That, that, <laughs> um, no rock, you know, no you know where I stand with uh with St- Stormy Daniels. I mean, he's for, I, for, I rate for it. all our Malaysian listeners just coming into the pod. Quick reprise. <laughs> I um yeah, I, I do rate Stormy Daniels very, very, very highly, better than Dacos. So, um, mm. obviously going to be harshly missed and yeah what bedford has has uh given us this year has really uh yeah, was missed as well so um yeah a couple of big outs but i mean yeah, yeah. I, th- I think we've said we've said all that needs to be said about this game and let's move on third quarter which does which <laughs> which does lead us into that was brutal which does lead us into how good's it going to be getting Snooze and Stormy back this week? And Finn, and hopefully, yeah. Ka- well, he's he's still yeah, a he's still Daniel, a maybe. Callahan, Cadman, Angwin? Question mark. Bruce Haynes, Keith Lloyd, Bahi. Oh, Angwin was the other one. I, I don't think we can underestimate losing Angwin because he's been a regular for us the last little while. So, um, and he has he has put together some pretty solid games. Yeah, Angwin. I think I think Angwin was a late withdrawal, wasn't he? Yeah, illness, and where yeah. where came into the where came into the main side. So yep. I reckon we'll get where do you we'll play? get to. A, uh, struggled a bit. Not bad, mate. Not bad. That was bad. <laughs> that One, was pretty good. Rags, get with the program. <laughs> that Two, was pretty good. Thank you, Sparrow. <laughs> Appreciate it. Glad to have you there for me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, we we had um. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully get Bedford Daniels back from suspended. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then Callahan, who had that soreness, uh, maybe get Cabman back, kicking eight. Um, who will go out? Either Keith or Keithy. maybe even Riccardi, but you can't really drop Riccardi after that game. Yeah. Um, Keith and possibly Angwin. Keith. Although, just a thing with um, hey, Callahan. Just needles, needles. You're out for two weeks. What's your thoughts on Keith? <laughs> <laughs> if, if you're out because it hasn't been clear the last few weeks should you upgrade soreness if it's the second if it's a second week of soreness to a sort of a fair bit fairly sore or quite sore like it's more than soreness yeah. like pretty sore i would say it'd be pretty sore um he's done he's got calf issues whatever that means we have years of calf issues with deledio so it doesn't instill me with confidence <laughs> <laughs> so yeah we play different age profile we play yeah. we play the bombers at the beanstalk so saturday 4 35 p.m good slot good slot dr um, nags has just put the shout out to the rest of the squitters if anyone's going he's put the hard yeah. word on me uh is that on the saturday so the other are you are you still gallivanting in sydney yeah, and i'll be back in camera it's plausible though i have got a grand master's grand final the day after Get out at Monica Oval, the Golden Egg. You know it's good for that. Two. Just a good Football. road trip before. Yes, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, fanging up, fanging up to Sydney after my son's preliminary <laughs> final. Uh, watching the game, probably a few quiet beers. Yeah, getting up early, sleeping on the couch while, while Mrs. Needles drives home. Fresh as a daisy, one pm, rolling. 
Ping in a hand. Ball on my face. Have a stroke because in Masters football, they have the defibrillator on the sideline. That's the beauty of it. I'd say you'd be you'd be paying a dollar thirty five to ping your hammy in the first quarter. <laughs> <laughs> you have to run, mate. My problem is calves. So yeah, the last the, uh, the last stretch the last stretch of form we've obviously lost a couple of games, but the bombers the bombers have played West Coast and North Melbourne in the last two games, and they've only just got over the line. I think they only beat West Coast. Play West Coast and North Melbourne twice this year, bombers. They're quite yeah, sixteen points. I think they right. beat. I think they beat West Coast by one point two weeks ago and they beat North Melbourne by three or four points in the game to scorn. So that they're they've been lucky to be hanging around the eight still. Um so we're both not in the greatest of form. You'd have to mm. think we're uh we're odds on favourites here. We are odds on favourites. We are the bookies like us. And I do think that after a game like that, generally speaking, we do bounce back pretty hard. And uh, like I've mentioned plenty of times on this pod this year, I have never raided the Bombers and I've never raided St Kilda. And if we can't fucking tell them up, then something's wrong. <laughs> well, I mean, who, who the seriously have they got? Daniel, who you have they got? They've got Phillips, who was a reject from, from the Giants. And Has he Barrett, resigned now? He's uh, retired yeah, too. He's re- no, he's still playing. He's retiring at the end of the year. They've and, got uh, quite a few Giants players. Dylan Shield, Caldwell. They had Devin Smith. Devin they had Smith. the guy whose shirt I've got, this kind of half 40 dude. Yeah, Tom Stewart. Tom Stewart. No, he plays with Geelong. Someone nah, Stewart, James Stewart. James Stewart. James, James Stewart. Stewart. Yeah. yeah. And they've got that new guy kicking goals up front. He's pretty good. You were talking about him last podcast. He's like yeah. fourth on the Coleman, fifth on the Coleman. Kyle Langford. Langford. Well, he's not new. I mean, he's, he's, not, in a, he's also he's, not ex Giants, is he? He's, no, he's no, no. playing. I'm just saying, he's, players they got. Yeah, Langford's right. sort oh. of playing, yeah, playing a players. new role this year. We've got a couple of players. Um, but they're probably their main main guy we need to worry about or stop is Zach Merritt. And I've just put mm. in here, we need another Dutch clamp. Well, who, that's interesting. Who, who can we get? But see, if Zach Merritt doesn't get your Darcy Parish will, they've got a decent one too, going. Uh, he's not as good as he's not as no, good as Zach. You've got to shut down Merritt. Zach Merritt's foot skills is are incredible. He's well, a, he's he's one of the best kicks in the comp. Yeah, he's elite. I don't know that it's in Kingsley's toolkit to bring out a clamp of the Dutch variety. I mean, we could just let him smash our midfield again, and we'll just get towed up. That's an option. Mm, it is an option. <laughs> that is said with a bit of bite. Well, who are you gonna? I mean, them Spartan words. I don't think Lock, Lockie Ash. Lockie Ash has done the job before. Oh, I, I, know, I know who we're using. We're using Morty. Morty absolutely shut down. Shut down uh, the bond. The bond. He's got that. Yeah, I'll do it, fellas. This one's mine. I mean, it is Warty's week, so we've uh, we've put a song out for him, so he might be up for the job. Three points, stuff, Warty. Yeah, he owes us. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, my prediction this what? week. And I was being a bit, I don't know what the word is. There is a word. Front foot? I, no, just get, saying we'd be up by 30 points down in Adelaide. That was just, well, it's not arrogant. Complacent. Complacent. It's, no, there's a better word. Yeah, no, I wasn't thinking about it enough. And I, I've thought about this one a lot, and I do think we're going to smash them. I'm just not going to be 30. <laughs> not going to be 30. Now, but we're, quickly, we're going to beat them. Quickly, Sparrow, can I just read some synonyms? Just because I'm desperate yeah, yeah. to know which one you'll use. Yeah, yeah. Uh, smug. No. Self satisfied. No. You're, in the, you're in the wrong starting word. Gloating, triumphant, proud, no, pleased. No, no, no. I'm all right, Jack. Should I view that's one word? No, that's it. Word? I'm all right, Jack. No, I've got it. I've got it. What? Delusional. Mm, Showing smug or uncritical <laughs> self satisfaction with oneself or one's achievements. No, gentlemen, the word is drum roll, facetious. <laughs> right. So, what's your pr- predictions, boys? Let's get this quarter done. Jeez, I, I really don't know how to go here. Um, I'm thinking. You don't think we can beat the Bombers at home after that shit Giants, performance? Giant, Giants by 18 points. Saturday, 4 30, Beanstalk. You can tell the universe hey, needles. I don't know who's going to win, but if we don't win, there's no point. Like, there's no Maybe. point playing. Like, you, no we, point. we've been. No point what? Talking about like, it, like the doing thing, podcasts. Like, no, it's one of those ones. Living. In, in finals. <laughs> it's pointless. If we can't win that, it would be pointless getting into the finals. Mm. You've got to go in. You've got to be beating teams below you. Go at home. Yeah. Hey. You just do. Has this got a little like bit that. of. 
Has this got a little bit of 2019 vibe about it? You know how we got towed up by... Nah. We got towed up Hawthorne in the snow, a couple of weeks out from finals, went on a run. Nah. Went on a run. No. Nah. Needles. We don't have... We don't no, have no, Rag, Rag snow, says no. Sn- Rag snow with me. Snow. Rag fucking wasn't there. He wasn't in Canberra in the snow. He didn't see how shit we played and scored 40 points. And he didn't see Jeremy Cameron's on. lip on the on the frozen floor of Monica on the turf, <laughs> just not wanting to be there. This is fucking bullshit. It's fucking cold. But, yeah, we have to win. So we're going to win. If we don't win... Fourth quarter. Fourth quarter. Yeah, you, you've got a couple of points here, mate. Retirement's coming thick and really- fast. Really interesting yeah. point. Really interesting. Yeah, I was there's, thinking the same there's, thing. there's a lot of gun players retiring this year. Like you look at the caliber of players. You got Lance Franklin, Trent Cochin, Nick Nadnui, Luke Shuey, Shannon Hearn, Paddy McCartan, Cunnington Zebel, Isaac Smith. There's some really good players. Um, I'm just mm. wondering who who do you think is likely to retire from us at the year's end? But beyond that, I just want to say. Every year feels like an amazing, an amazing year for retirements. Like you just get some big, big names. You go, God, will it ever be like this again? But this feels, yeah, this particularly. Feels... I don't know. Does. That, I don't know. Nat knew he's announced his retirement, has he? Yeah, he did today. Yeah, he did. Oh, today. Right. That's yeah. probably a good thing for them. Phil has to be thinking about it. He hasn't. Yeah, you think? Lovely you think Keith. Phil? I know you're keen on Lockie Keith, but he's still getting a game and he's still playing a role. So was. Cunnington. Who's who's no, he wasn't. who's who's Lockie Keith? Zebel. Who's coming for Lockie Keith? Who's playing our uh, second ruck? Second any ruck player, ruck. any player that is twenty meters away from him and feels like they want a cheap tackle. Right, Lake Ali could be your man when he comes back from injury. Tall, tall. Silky Segway. Silky Segway. Silky Segway. So any announcements? So we could. You're right about. You're right about Phil Davis though, and. Cal Ward will get, keep going. No one else seems like they're on the on the end. On the, no, I don't on think the so. Lead, I think Phil, Phil's probably the only one. You know what would be yeah. really cool is if Phil comes back and blitzes it in the finals. Like for some reason. Everyone else is injured. Oh, Jack well, so, is gone. Taylor's well, gone. Himmelberg's gone. We don't want that. But uh, what about? That would be a pretty cool way to go out. What about Maybe. Adam Kennedy? Nah. He's, Kennedy's has done a knee and he's in rehab. And, yeah. He's contracted for next year. I think he's planning on playing. He's he's thirty one. But apart from him, like Callum Ward's the oldest. Uh, Callum Ward and Lockie Keith are both the same age, thirty three years and four months. Then you got Phil Davis, who's not even thirty three yet. And then you got really? Daniel Lloyd, Nick Haynes, and Adam Kennedy that are all thirty one. Everyone else is under thirty. Yeah, well, that's pretty healthy, isn't it? You know, I pitched a book idea to Phil Davis years and years and years ago. You what? I pitched a book idea to him. He said he'd take it to Sheedy. He never did, obviously, because it was a great idea. <laughs> Where did you meet him? Did you email him? He was having a signing, meet and greet signing piece when he just joined the Giants mm. in like, must have been 2012. Yeah, it was in 2012 at the Woden Library in Woden. More importantly. And um, he was. What was. Yeah, what, there was no. What, one was, there. what was the pitch? Uh, it was. Have you ever? Yeah, it's a book called Paper Line, written by a really good journalist who probably almost could write as well as me, called George Plimpton. And he went and pitched up at the Detroit Lions as just a journalist, but he just wanted to do a, did a preseason. Oh, with like like Ted Lasso. What's it like for a normal person to roll with supreme athletes? Oh. Let's, so you were trying to basically bunker down with the Giants and just write, write about... Well, at the time, I was vaguely 30. And I could still move around a bit. Like, I could still run, and I would have been be able to kind of keep up with them and sort of sizable. But there were people... Like, Israel Folau was running mm. around with them at the time. It would have been really interesting. And they, they weren't yet... Well, it was 2012 their first senior year? I can't remember. But it would would have been a really interesting time to do it. Anyway, Phil Davis let me down. Hey, um, and some exciting, <laughs> exciting news, um, Giants... I know we've been uh, inundated with people calling for another player interview, mm-hmm. and we may just have that lined up for next week's pod. So, so stay tuned. Um, it's a a new player. I think what is his second year? Just yep. keep a leer to the ground, and you might be Ooh. something else. Uh, <laughs> no leaks. No leaks. No leaks. Don't leak anywhere else. <laughs> so yeah. yeah. 
I've I've uh, just waiting to hear back. Um, yeah, see what happens. Hopefully we can get hopefully we can get the big fella on and um, have a bit of bit of insightful chat with him because he's quite a uh, it's he's a really good talker and, and uh, he's re- he leans strongly on the on the gratitude perspective. So yeah, I think he I think he'd be fantastic. Yeah, but what was the other one? Oh, the announcement. No, we, I reckon we've already done the competition well, announcement. No, we haven't. No, we haven't. No, this this is this is this week's what? competition. This is round two. This week's competition. Oh, we got another one. Yeah, I've got to get rid of the merge before the season ends. True. <laughs> so, that is true. So Can't the comp- give you competition, competition boys, competition this week, big announcement. Yeah. And yes, if you are in Canada, you can enter or New Zealand, Barrow Serious, or Malaysia, even Malaysia. Yeah. Selamat Malang. Nazila. I, um, this this week's comp is actually going to be picture of you watching the game. Are you pointing to me? Or are you pointing to Targus? No, no. I'm talking to the audience, oh, yeah, which right. can't see us because no, yeah, it's a yeah, podcast. Fair but were we to put this on YouTube, you could see me talking to you. That is actually awesome. Uh, so you're going to take a picture. You're going to put it on the interwebs, on socials, tag the squinters on whatever our handle is. You'll have to look that up. <laughs> Best, most creative post gets an awesome prize. So look forward to seeing what you can come up with. Basically, you watching the job. Watching. And the second part of this prize is you get to go on the Wall of Glory, which is a page on our website. What about <laughs> what about can you be watching the Giants either on the TV or at the game? Both. Well, Dr. Oh, Nang, either or. can, it, can Squidges think, enter? I think bonus points. Well. Bonus points if you are... At the game, mm, there's no terms and conditions on our competition. No, so, true. Look, yeah. And also, and, and it would appear from last week's that we can write terms and conditions after the competition's closed. So, <laughs> you know, it's very freestyle. Put it this way: we're not, we're not, nothing. Certain. We're not at the size we're we're getting audited for our competition. So, I'm pretty relaxed about that. <laughs> Imagine if someone wrote in a very terse email. Do squid it. Uh, one more thing. One more thing. Uh, Obviously, we're on all these different platforms we now. Are. You need to follow us. You need to like us. You need to share us, share our content. You're pointing at the and audience. If you yeah, are, not me. Yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> and also give us a rating, give us a review. Reviews on Apple, ratings on Spotify. Thank you very much. Emails. Well, obviously, emails now are pointless because I'm going to say never surrender by the never surrender pod at gmail.com. But only Ragnar ever emailed us anyway, so don't worry about it. Oh, no, actually, we got the bloke. He came in because he wanted the song. He wanted Ragnar's song, uh, and he got yeah, no, that was online. So that was well done by Brad. Yeah, no, we also... Someone wants your song. He wants the chords or something online now. We, we, got, a, we got a request for the song to be done at the ground on first message on Threads. Did I send that to you, blokes? No, you asked what thread, what threads was. Imagine you that. didn't know what threads was. Yeah. What the fuck's threads? <laughs> In our first ever message, just caught up that. on the pod after the Adelaide game. This is from Talkium. I think you need to distribute the sheet music and lyrics of the Toby Green song to the full cheer squad. Get the whole stadium <laughs> singing like the Barmy <laughs> Army, and that is a fantastic idea, Talkium. Wow. Hey, um, and continue on from this theme, uh, Sparrow. Do you reckon you're going to do another video for one of the other songs? It is in the pipeline. pipeline? I must admit, time is not in copious amounts. So um, you're waiting for the 36 hour day. Yeah. So if I can get rid of sleep, I'll definitely do it. But since I do have to sleep, I'll um, it might be next week sometime. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, Which one do you reckon you go for? Do you reckon you go for the backline song, Mm, or do you reckon you go for the? uh, the signing of ha- signing of Harry probably come down to whatever content I get my hands on, <laughs> or we could put it to the audience via a poll. Stay tuned, righto, boys. Um, running out <laughs> of our second meeting, and somehow after an absolute bin fight of a game, we've gone through two freaking which we reviewed for three minutes. For three minutes. That's the beauty of this podcast. We go lateral, we go creative, we go positive, we go negative. We take you on the ups and the downs of the GWS Orange Crush journey. Be the best one yet, I have to say. Never surrender. No, that was New Zealand. Never surrender. Never surrender. Never surrender.
Luckily, I got back in on top of the game. Next hardest working player, maybe Coniglio. It might just be an oversight, but here's a chance to get it right. It's Coniglio. And Coniglio said uh, 13. Stephen Kenelio for another. I think by the look on Sparrow's face, he's definitely cutting that one out.